Hello everybody, how are you doing? I don't know why I'm asking, you can't really reply. I think we're set to go. I'm gonna do a little Q&A video. I haven't done one of these in a while, uh, but since we're all kind of hunkered down, I, I put it out there, I said, if you have any questions, I'll try and answer them now. So I got tw uh, questions from Twitter, Instagram, from right here on YouTube. So let's dive in, let's cannonball into this thing. Let's bring our knees up to our chin, grasp them tightly, and plunge into the, the, the Q&A here on The Butt Pod. Should I start with a YouTube question since we're here on YouTube? Questions I got via YouTube, or should I save that for later? Do the twi I'll do the Twitter and the Instagram questions first. Save the, uh, that's savvy. I'm, I'm thinking maybe you'll stick around and watch more of the video if your U YouTube questions are at the end. Huh? I'm no, uh, what do you call it? Dope. All right, question number one from Twitter. Alana asks, if you could write an episode for any TV series, what would it be? Oh, do you mean currently or of all time? Because right now I'm too busy. I'm too busy right now to write any shows for any TV shows currently. But if you go back in time prior to me having a TV show, then I might have some time to write, but less experience. So it would be r rough. Am I overthinking this thing that's never going to happen? Probably. But let's see. Ooh, the Dick Van Dyke Show. I was a big fan of the Dick Van Dyke Show. Uh, I might uh, see if I could write an episode for that. Or Cheers. I, I love Cheers because there was a lot of dialogue. People sitting around talking, cracking wise, being funny, less plot driven, intricate in and out plot driven stuff and more people sitting around on a stool drinking and cracking wise. I have a lot of experience in that regard. R. Thompson, Burt's Blurts, asks, do you prefer a shot glove hand or stick side? Well, this goes to me being a, an old time goaltender. Would I rather, if somebody's coming down taking a shot on me, would I rather they go stick hand or glove hand? I would rather well, it's a, it's a funny thing. I'm more likely to make the save glove side. So the, the part of me, the goalie part of me wants it to go glove side because that increases my chances. I'm probably more likely to catch the puck, stop the puck with my glove hand. But if they go stick side where my blocker is, the showman part of me loves, I've always loved a blocker save. I call it the Wonder Woman save because Wonder Woman would, you know, knock bullets out of the sky with her wrists. And that's what a blocker save is, essentially. If a goalie makes a great blocker save, I always call it the Wonder Woman save. He Wonder Woman's the, the puck into the corner. pa -ding! Rob the Plumber 83 asks, who would you like to meet and never did, dead or alive? Oh, I'd probably have to go alive on that one, right? That's the old, uh, but let's see. Who would I like to meet? Uh, it's amazing how many of my childhood heroes or just people you don't think you're ever going to get to meet in real life. I, I've been lucky to meet a lot of my comedic heroes. I've met Steve Martin briefly, uh, Bob Newhart, John Candy. You know, I'm, I've, I've got the opportunity to meet. You know, I might say, I, might, I like to go back and meet Jackie Gleason because hey, I'm a big fan of his comedy and how he legitimately revolutionized t television. But also I want to see if he's as uh, much of a uh, lunatic egomaniac as I've heard stories. You know, you hear stories about Jackie Gleason being a uh, bit of an egomaniac. And I would love to go back and see if those were true. Here's what lends me to, lends me to believe that it might be true about Jackie Gleason's ego. At the end of the Honeymooners, there'd be a, there was a full title card that just said, entire production supervised by Jackie Gleason. To me, that's a little, maybe more than you need to put out there. You know, there's part of me that says, well, I should go back and it's somebody who like really changed humanity or something. Grill some of the greatest minds the planet has ever seen. But I just want to go, uh, you know, talk to a fat guy who drinks and does comedy. Willy Nilly, was at Crows, Willy Nilly asks and provides uh, a graphic. Uh, what is Emma knitting at her bachelorette party? It looks dot, 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 suggestive. Does it look suggestive? I, I think you're, you're maybe seeing what you want to see there, Willy Nilly. I think you're maybe, if you're seeing a Willy, it might be your, the fact that your name is Willy Nilly, you might be, everything might be filtered through the notion of Willy first, you know, you might be in a Willy first frame of mind. I don't know, was that a Christopher Cross song or something? <laughs> I'm in a willy state of mind. Oh, Billy Joel. Willy Billy Joel. Kev Bell 007. Uh, ooh, license to... I better answer this properly. He has the license. The government has issued this fellow the license to kill me. So here's two questions. What's the recipe for the Ruby Club? And is Corner Gas Animated getting a season three? 
Uh, the recipe of the Ruby Club, I couldn't tell you personally, but I know it has been published. This question was asked by um, Michelle Sponigal, wrote two books about corner gas, uh, Tales from Dog River, Dog River Confidential. You can find those. They're available. If you, if you Google uh, or uh, Bing those, if you duck, duck, go those, search them on the search engine of your choice. Yahoo, those babies. And those books are out there and available. And in one of them, uh, there is the recipe. There's also the recipe for the chili cheese dog that I ate, which was legitimately fantastically delicious. Jay Robertson, our props guy, he was the guy who cooked up the chili for those. Oh man, my mouth is watering thinking about it. And then the other question I included, because this is a little promotional thing, is Corner Gas Animated getting a season three? Yes, we're well into production on season three. I don't know when it's going to begin airing. That's up to the network. But season three is, uh, we're well into it. We're, we're nipple deep in season three. No, you, you don't have to quote me on that, but we're well into it. And I, I'm really happy with how season three is coming together. So, uh, you know, subscribe here and I'll make sure I shout it loud and lots. Well, as soon as we know the, uh, the premiere date of season three, Corner Gas Animated. I don't know what the hell that was that drove by. Loud. Zamboni just, Zamboni in the street. Is that the verb? Can Zamboni be a verb? Zambonying? Do you hear that crow? That's the loudest crow I've ever heard in my life. That sounds like a 12-pound crow. Does that happen? How, how big does a crow get? That sounds as big as a Thanksgiving turkey for sure. All right, let's dive over to the Instagram questions. You can follow me on Instagram too if you like. Oh, Twitter or Instagram both at Brent Butt. Okay, Instagram questions. Knight of Ivory asks, is Oliver ever going to make an appearance on Corner Gas Animated? I don't know. Oliver made an appearance on Hiccups when he was a, a pup. We had him in a scene. There was a scene at a vet's office. And so a guy who worked for me uh, held Oliver. So he was on camera. But the thing with Adam, is, oh, see, Oliver is a hairy dog and animating is tricky. He's got a lot of hairs. I think it would be problematic for the animators because that's a, that's a fuzz was whisker puss. My dog Oliver has got a, he's got, he's got a dang fuzzy face, that guy. He's got the best fuzzy face. World's greatest fuzz wuzzle. I, I tell him that all the time. It's Professor K. I almost says Sork. It's Professor Sork. If you could do a radio drama, what class of character would you want to play? It's funny that you asked this because I'm actually thinking of, I've been researching how to write a radio play um, because I'm a big fan. Nancy and I listen to radio plays all the time. Old radio plays from the 30s and the 40s. There's a treasure trove. Bless the hearts of the people who've uh, saved these things and put them online. If, if you duck, duck, go, if you bing it up, the shadow Philip Marlowe. The quality of the Philip Marlowe ones is amazing. Sounds like it was just digitally recorded last week, but it was done in the 40s. I don't know what, how they were preserved so good or recorded so well. Sam Spade. Oh, CBS Radio Mystery Theater from the 70s. CBSRMT.com. Uh, those, those ones are good and creepy. So I'm, uh, it's, it's timely. Is it prescient? Is that the proper use of that word? Often I'll use a word that sounds like it's the right word in this scenario. But as I'm saying it, I realize I don't actually know if this is the right word. It doesn't stop me. I just plow ahead anyway. It's not the first time I've looked like a bonehead. But it's, it's, it's extra worse if you, if you look like a bonehead while you're trying to look like you're smart. That's what it's extra. That's the verbal equivalent of the guy trying a fancy skateboard trick when he's not that good at skateboarding and just goes down, collarbone onto the railing at the shopper's drug mart, punk, snap. Oh, nobody wants to see that. And yet we all kind of do. A lot of views on that kind of stuff. But don't, uh, don't, don't go out and do the dangerous things on videos, kids. Yeah, I think I covered my caboose legally there. There's a lot of Instagram questions. I better I'm gonna start stif sifting through. William Quinn, 1971, asks, How many chili cheese dogs did you eat? Like when? Today? The Bedrock Babe asks, What's your favorite smell? Uh, first thing that leaves your mind, frying onions. Yeah, that's it. I'll just, I'll just put it out there now. Oh, although baking bread. Maybe it's dependent upon mood. There are probably some days when the smell of baking bread, smell of bread baking with coffee being brewed in the background. But yeah, I still think it's hard, hard to beat. The smell of onions frying with black pepper on top of it. So many, so many food-related questions. I'm just going to, when I'm done this video, I'm just going to go hit the fridge like a hippopotamus. You know how you know, hippopotamuses hit the fridge? Susan Lockhart asks, when the snow melts, where does the white go? This is, a lot of people don't know this, but what happens is it's all uh, gathered up by the people who make liquid paper. The liquid paper people scoop up all the white come spring and they take that to their uh, whitening factories. Still holding it down. Uh, that, that's a good name and also good news. 
Still holding it down. Uh, asks, are you coming to the States in 2020 slash 21? Hopefully Washington, D.C., Northern VA, which I believe is Virginia. I'm not up in my abbreviations, but the hell else would it be? Virginia's not that big of a state. Why you got to cut it in half and just say, just come to Northern Virginia. Don't go down to the... We, we don't like those people in Southern Virginia. If I do get to Virginia, I'll probably do both. Northern and Southern Virginia. Eastern, Western Virginia. And, and then a show dead center in the geographical center of Virginia. Just me standing in a field or a swamp. I don't even know what the, what's the terrain there in Virginia. Anyway, the, the answer to your question is uh, maybe. That is not a very satisfying answer, but I'm actually talking about it. We're talking about me maybe doing a, a tour down in the States. So something that I haven't done a lot of. I haven't performed in the States very much. So uh, we're looking to do some of that. Again, uh, subscribe here or follow me on Twitter, Instagram. If I get to heading down to the States, I'll be uh, letting everybody know. Okay, it just looks like 77 more Instagram questions. Now, uh, I'm going to pare that down. That's too many. High Water Gal asks, what's the... Now, I see, I wonder if, it, if she's a gal around high water or if she's a water gal who's kind of high. You know what I mean? Zipped up on goofers? She's probably... Are you smart? Are you on the weed? High Water Gal. What? She's asked, what's the first joke you ever wrote? Um, I can tell you the first joke that I remember doing... Like I, that I, I remember writing and doing on occasion to make my friends laugh. And I was probably around, well, it was, it had to do with $6 million man. So let's say I was maybe 10. You remember the opening of the $6 million man, they used to say, we have the technology, we have the capability. And then they rebuild him, right? To make him the $6 million bionic man. So my joke I used to say to my friends was, we have the technology, we have the capability. Does anybody have $6 million? I had a big laugh with my friends. Oh, hey, do the $6 million man joke. Yeah, that's the first one I remember doing. Craig Northey asks, Craig Northey, who some of you probably know, he's the guy who does all the music for uh, Corner Gas Animated. He and Jesse Valenzuela from the Jim Blossoms, Craig Northey plays in the band The Odds, they um, co-wrote the opening theme song, Corner Gas. Craig also, for Corner Gas Animated, Craig does all the scoring for the music throughout the animated series. Anyway, Craig Northey asks... And, you know, we often work together. He could have just asked me this in person. Maybe he's intimidated by me. Who could blame him? He says, uh, we know a unicorn can win in a fight with a Sasquatch, because we've seen that in Corner Gas Animated. If they could make friends, would a unicorn be sturdy enough for Sasquatch to ride? How much does a unicorn saddle cost? Sorry, two questions. Yeah, you're really pushing the... But because I know you, I will, let, I will allow it. Um, first of all, how much does a unicorn saddle cost? I don't think Sasquatch strikes me as a guy who type of guy who uses a saddle. He's au natural, right? He's in, of the woods. He's very organic. He probably just hop right up there. Uh, as to your other question, would a unicorn be sturdy enough for Sasquatch to ride? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Because Sasquatch, you know, uh, Gigantopithecus black eye is uh, generally considered to be somewhere in the neighborhood of six to eight hundred pounds. Unicorns. Hmm. See, we don't know much about unicorns. I talk like we know a lot about Sasquatch. We have all the facts on Sasquatch. However, we don't, I don't know. Here's the thing with unicorn. Uh, magic seems to be involved with unicorns. A unicorn is not uh, restricted to our laws of physics, it seems. So they may have more things at play, which would allow them to, you know, 600 pounds, 700 pounds, maybe nothing to a unicorn, as it is to me. I'll often curl uh, eight or 900 pounds. I'll do like 50 reps. And final Instagram question before we go to the YouTube. Stitching with Love asks, are you in touch with any old classmates? I am. Several. Uh, especially one, one of my uh, oldest buddies I've known since I first started school. He lives here in Vancouver where I live. And he and I, we, when I was 20 and he was 21, we started a publishing company to do a, a comic book called Existing Earth. Anyway, he went and joined the military. I went off and became a greasy nightclub comedian. Years and years later, here we are both working in animation. Not on the same project, but he's an animation director doing mostly 3D uh, computer animating stuff. And here I am making an uh, animated TV series, Corner Gas Animated. Isn't that a funny old world? He and I both have, also we both have large heads. It stopped. I had to restart. That's when you know you've talked too much, when your camera just quits. Camera's like, yeah. Sorry, Chatty. I got things to do. I'm out of here. Let's dive into the YouTube questions now. Your questions from here on YouTube. Red Rooster asks, asks, I would love to watch Corner Gas and the animated series, but I live in the States. 
any idea when we'll be able to watch them down here. Yeah, well, you can watch the live action now uh, on uh, IMDb TV, which you can access if you have the IMDb TV app. It comes on your Fire Stick, and it's free. You can watch it for free. That's the beauty of it. You just need to, I think you just need an Amazon account. And the animated series is uh, going to be available there on, on there as well. Sean S. asks, what shows are you watching right now? Uh, no, I'm, I'm doing this uh, YouTube video right now. It would be, that would be rude of me to be making this video for you while I'm watching another program. Like every now and then just check in with you. How you doing? But it go back to the show for 20 minutes at a time. That wouldn't be proper, Sean. When I'm not doing one of these videos, uh, I, I'm big into, uh, I enjoy British mysteries. We're watching a, a thing right now, Line of Duty. It's a British show about cops who investigate cops, like anti-corruption unit cops shaking down other cops who are who are bent, as they say over there in the UK. We would say crooked cop here. They say bent. The, the British, they know how to make a mystery so well. I don't know what it is. That's a mystery in and of itself. Why are the British so good at mysteries? Isn't that a conundrum? It's a paradox wrapped in a falafel. Wade Murray asks, if you could go anywhere in Canada, where would you go? Well, I, I believe I can go anywhere in Canada. This is news to me. You're proposing something that I was unaware of, Wade, that I'm unable to go where I would like to go in Canada. But your question has got me all hemmed in. I, I uh, used to be able to say that I performed in every province and territory in Canada. I can no longer say that now because uh, one of the territories was fractioned up and now we have a new territory called Nunavut, which I have yet to visit. So that's where I would go. Wade, as soon as I hang up here, as soon as I hit off on the camera, if the camera doesn't quit on me again. All right, let's make this the final question here, because I don't, I have no idea. Once I edit this, how long is it going to be? This will be the next series on uh, that you can stream. It'll be a 12-parter. Uh, final question from Rod, Robin Adamson. I once heard that your family had a connection to my home state of Nebraska. Just wondering if that was true and if you have ever visited here. I've, a, it is true. My mother's family was from Ponca. Ponca, Nebraska. They farmed just outside Ponca. I always joke that my ancestors moved from Nebraska to Saskatchewan because they wanted to gear down. They couldn't handle the hurly-burly pace of Ponca, Nebraska. We got to get out of this rat race. They headed up to Saskatchewan. And second part, uh, have I ever visited? I have never, but I do want to specifically go to Ponca. I'm going to go to Ponca. I'm going to see all the sights in Ponca. And then when that's done, 10 minutes later, I don't know, I'll go get a bite to eat. Again, back to food. What's with me? A food, a food abuser. There's no getting around it. Uh, all right, that's it. I, again, I apologize. I have no idea how long this video was. Let's all have a look. You can see down in the corner. Let's have a look down in the corner. Am I looking in the right? I don't know. Anyway, thanks for dialing this up. Uh, so spread the word. Tell your friends. Subscribe right here. And when you subscribe here, make sure you click the little bell notification daily. That way, whenever I post a new video, you will be alerted. I'm planning on making more videos more regularly now as season three production in Cornergrass Animated starts to, you know, we're over the hump now. Do you enjoy these Q&A uh, videos at all? Let me know down below. Give it a thumbs up. Hey, leave me a comment down below. Yeah, do more of these. Eh, that's enough of these stupid things, you idiot. Something like that. You don't have to call me an idiot, but I mean, feel free. You wouldn't be the first. All right, signing off now. Thanks for checking things out. Watch Corner Gas Animated wherever available. Uh, dial it up. Duck, duck, go. Bing it. AOL. E what other? Netscape it. Netscape that. They're not still around, are they? Are you still watching even?